what we're going to do in this activity we're going to start off with the same weekly sales data we might have used in a previous activity so for each week of say any 2013 we have each SKU meaning a specific product the barcode and the weekly sales in dollars and in this tutorial I'm going to be using this column of weekly sales but when you do your assignment you have to find the column that has your name in it and use that data now what we want is we have this data showing for each week and each SKU the weekly sales but then there's another data set that shows us for each SKU which class they are in segmentation class where the A category is most important B category is less important of a product and C category is the least important and for each SKU we have information on whether the primary customer is a government agency or a private firm and what we want to do is we want to move th these data this information on the ABC segmentation class over to the main data set and ultimately get a bar chart that looks like this that sh has for each class and within the class for SKUs that's primary per primarily purchased by a government agency or primarily purchased by a private firm it has the weekly sales and we want our bar chart to look uh, exactly like this and to upload it to Canvas. And we're going to do that by using some lookup functions. And these lookup functions I find people use in at the workplace all the time. In addition to pivot tables, they're one of the most useful Excel functions you can find. Now the first thing I want to do is make a new sheet which just has the data corresponding to you. So you go over here to data and columns A and B are going to be used by everybody so I'm going to copy that by going control C or command C on a Mac come over to sheet 2 and I'm going to paste it here and then we want the weekly sales and for this tutorial I'm using this column but let's say your your name shows up right here suppose this is your name you want to use this column of data so remember, every student has a different data set so you'll all get different answers to prevent cheating but I'm going to be using this data control C to copy come over here control V to paste and there's my data set But now I also want in these columns information on which class they are using ABC segmentation and the primary type of consumer. So what I'm wanting is this information here. I'm going to go ahead and copy that and bring it over here. And what I want to do is use some lookup functions. That's going to say, so I'm going to have a, a formula here that's going to say I want to look up this SKU and return for that SKU the segmentation class so it's going to look up this SKU which looks like it's right here it's going to find it in this row and then it's going to return me the value in this column there's two different lookup functions I'm going to show you first I'm going to show you the X lookup function this is going to be the one that will probably be the most commonly used one in a couple years from now and of course if you want to know how X lookup works exactly you just do the same thing I did when I was learning this stuff you just Google X lookup Excel and it's going to give you all the information on it so it's a function where we tell it what we want it to look up the array where that value may be and which array to return me a value and then there's some other options here that are optional and this function works like this so I'm going to go X lookup and notice it's always going to ask me what's my lookup value I want it to look up this SKU that SKU number and then 
to look up array. So where is that SKU found? Well, I'll come back to this data set and that SKU data is found in this array. And I'm going to select all the SKUs here by starting here, holding down shift, holding down control or command if you're on a Mac and hitting the down arrow and I've selected everything. And then comma. And then So here's the array where the SKU will be found. Then it wants me to tell the array to return. And that is the second column over here. So I want to return the value in the second column. And that should be all I need to do. Let's see if that works. Looks like it does work. So SKU 3824651, uh, 3824651. Yes, it is segment A. And so it does look like that, that formula works. So you see how useful that lookup function can be. Now, suppose I want to copy and paste this all the way down. So I select the cell. I take the cross over here and then I come to the lower right hand corner until it turns into crosshairs and I double click. And it does copy and paste it all the way down, but I'm getting errors here. This means the error are not available. And what happened was this is the correct formula for all the rows in, in this data set. But when I copy it and paste it down, Notice that as I keep going down this list, the cell values are also changing, the reference values. I want them to stay the same. Well, I can just change that by going here to keep this address the same, A2 to A51, regardless of how many, where I copied and pasted. We just put dollar symbols in front of the rows and column numbers. Now, when I copy and paste all the way down by going to the lower right hand corner and double clicking, now it looks correct. And indeed, those numbers are correct. So that's one uh, lookup function you can use. Now let me show you a, another lookup function that's very similar, probably more popular right now, but they might actually phase it out in a bit. And this is going to be something called a V lookup function. And what I, what I want to do here is I want to achieve the same thing. I want a formula here that's going to look up this SKU and it's going to look it up in this table. It's going to find the row where that SKU exists and it's, now it's going to return me the value in the third column on that row, which here is government agency. And first thing I'm going to do so I don't have to worry about address values like A2 to C51, I'm going to give this whole table a name that I can just refer to in words. And so I'm going to select this whole table by starting here, hold down shift, go across two times, then to select and scream all the way to the bottom, I hold down control or command if you're on a Mac and hit the down arrow and I scream to the bottom. Then I'm going to give this table a name and I'll just call this um, LKUP for like lookup. And notice now when this table is selected, this value comes up here. Notice also if I come to another cell and then I come over here and type that table name, it'll automatically select that whole table. That's going to be useful. I'm going to come over here to here, what I want here is to put the primary customer type for each SKU. We're going to be using VLOOKUP. And as always, when you want to know how VLOOKUP works, you just Google VLOOKUP in Excel and it will tell you everything you need. And the formula works like this. V, I want to look up the SKU. Which table array do I want to look, look it up in? the table we call lookup. 
and which column index in column two. I'm sorry, column three, because that's where the primary customer type information is. Uh, this range lookups I can put here such that if I write false, it only finds an exact match, not just an approximation. And now I can just copy and paste this all the way down and I and it's going to work because I don't have to worry about cell address changes because I've given that table a name and as we go down the list here we won't do want to look up the value to go from you know, B2 to B3 to B4 and so on. Now remember our ultimate goal is to get a chart that shows for the average weekly sales for all SKUs in Class A government agency, weekly sales for all SKUs in Class A private firm, and then for each other class and organization combination, and to get a chart that looks like this. And we're going to easily achieve that using pivot tables. So for pivot tables, I'm going to select all of these data insert pivot table into a new worksheet and there we are oh. now our values on the y-axis are average weekly sales so that means over here I want to take weekly sales drag it over here to values the default is sum of weekly sales I want to change that to average average weekly sales and it gives me this what this means is the average weekly sales for all SKUs regardless of their class regardless of their primary customer type is 10,691 but I want to know average weekly sales by each combination of segmentation class and customer type. So first I'm going to come over here, segmentation class, I'm going to drag it down to the rows. So this is telling me for SKUs in class B, the average weekly sales is 17,733. But remember, for class B, I want it broken out according to whether they're a government agency or a private firm. So that means I also has to drag have to drag primary customer type down here. And now, yes, we are given the average weekly sales for every combination of segmentation class and customer type. And so now I want to take these data and use it to make a bar chart. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new sheet, come back to my pivot table, select all the data, come to my new sheet and then I want to paste special values so paste special values so otherwise it's going to paste the whole pivot table over and I just want the values and now just from experience I know to get a bar chart that looks like this that that separates the classes and customer type like this I need to make a table that looks like this. First, in rows, I want class A, class B, and class C. And then customer type, I want in the column government agency and private firm. And then I just go collect the values for each of those. So class A, Government agency, average weekly sales are this. Class A, private firm, average weekly sales is this. And then I do that for the other ones. And there are my values. I'm going to go ahead and I know these are sales in dollars and so I'm going to change it to dollar bills and let's just get rid of the decimal places and now I want to take this and make a table so I'm going to go insert 
bar chart and there we go this is already very similar to what we want here but this difference is we want different font colors font size and so we're going to do that now and when you I'm going to want you this time to upload both, both a PDF of the chart and the whole spreadsheet because I'm going to go in here to your spreadsheet and make sure you did the lookup formulas exactly like this. So when, I, when I'm always formatting a new chart, I always bring it first into its own sheet so I can export it to a PDF later. Now I always, I'm going to want to do, so I'm selecting the whole chart, I'm going to go home, I want to use good old Garamond font, I want black font, and I want to be in bold, and let's choose a font size of 14, yeah that looks good. Um, other things to make it exactly like this, I want to get rid of those grid lines. So I'm going to select the grid lines, right click, format grid lines, and choose no line. Um, I want to get rid of this border right here, so I select the whole thing, border, no line. And then I think the final thing to make it look exactly like this, I need to use this title. We always want to make sure your title is explicit about exactly what it's showing. So I want it to say average weekly sales for all SKUs in each ABC segmentation class and type of primary customer. Right, so I want your um, chart to look exactly like this, but I want you to also add data labels because remember, all, everyone's going to have different values here. So we're going to go here, design, add chart element, data labels, let's say outside. And of course, remember, you're going to be using different data. So you'll, for class A private firm, you won't have something exactly 2,615, but it probably will be very similar. And then we're just going to export that to a PDF. So save as a Acrobat PDF. Um, just these sheets. I don't, I don't want to do it like that. I'm going to do save as. Let's find this easier. Save as, PDF, let's just look up data, um, options, we want to just save the active sheet, we don't want to make a PDF of everything, and then save. Now for me, I already made one, so yeah, we're going to replace it. And there we go. And for this assignment, you're going to upload both this PDF, look at exactly like this, but slightly different values for each bar, and you're going to upload your entire spreadsheet.